Hello everyone so welcome again to my YouTube channel and please subscribe my channel for the further updates okay so today we are going to discuss our, about our topic that is OSPF protocol that is one of the most important topic of the CCNA and it is a layer 3 routing protocol the OSPF is called the open shortest path first protocol okay it is the widely used routing protocol over the internet and it is a a link state routing protocol that falls under the category of interior gateway right routing protocol well if i talk about the number of protocol that works under under the uh, interior gateway uh, gateway routing protocol these are the igp protocol r routing information protocol eigrp ospf and the is is so these uh, four protocols comes comes under the category of igp protocol and if i talk about the EGP protocol that is called exterior gateway protocol BGP is the part of that so uh, if I talk about the OSPF protocol why the OSPF protocol is important and if we compare the OSPF protocol with the previous three protocol like a uh, routing information protocol it was limited up to 15 hope count that is why we cannot use over the larger networks and routing information protocol doesn't have advanced method to select the best path if I talk about the EIGRP, the issue with EIGRP is that this protocol is limited to Cisco devices. This is Cisco property as well as it can work up to 100 hope count. But this protocol is really a faster protocol if we have any Cisco network. So I will prefer you to use the EIGRP protocol. Last one is OSPF protocol that we are discussing. So OSPF protocol is a link state routing protocol if i talk about the routing information protocol and the eigrp these two protocols are the advanced distance vector and distance vector routing protocol well ospf uses the digcaster algorithm to find the best path right so it is a layer 3 protocol and the protocol number is 89 ospf is a classless routing protocol that is means it supports the cidr value as well as subnetting that is means it is support it supports slash 26 27 25 and slash 28 and slash 29 as well as slash 30 so all of these subnets so cidr values uh cidr values supported by the ospf protocol okay well ospf sub protocol is also supports the authentication method layer 3 security also supported by this ospf protocol supports both ip version 4 and ip version 6 so there are two types of ip address we know ip version 4 and ip version 6 so both of these um, ip internet protocols are supported by the ospf protocol okay if i talk about the ospf protocol so the ad value of ospf protocol is 110 for internal external as well as the inter area as well as the intra areas because we have two types of areas like intra area and, and inter area for both of these the ad value is 110 if i talk about the routing information protocol the ad value is 120 uh, eigrp has an ad value of what uh, 90 and for the external it is 170 right but currently we are discussing about the local area networks for the internal uh, internal networks the eigrp protocol has an ad value of 90 so why why ad value is important is important this is a main question so if i talk about the ad value so lower the ad value means more trustworthy is protocol so that is means if any protocol has a lower ad value that is means th that protocol is really trustworthy and it is ba better protocol than others if i talk about the ospf so ospf has an ad value of 110 if we compare all of these eigrp is a best protocol but this is limited up to cisco devices that is that is why we are using the second largest uh, ad value that is 110 or you can say second lowest ad value well, there are two types of timers in OSPF. There, that is one, uh, 10 second for the hello timer and that timer is 40 second. OSPF multicast address is 224.0.0.5 and 224.0.0.6. We are going to discuss about both of these two in our practical session. 
well before that let's talk about the uh, the multicast multicast ip for other protocol the other protocols are eigrp has a multicast address of 224.0.0.9 right and routing information protocol has a multicast address of 224.0.0.10 i already have explained the multicasting in our previous videos if any anyone don't know what is the meaning of multicast so he can go through the previous <laughs> video that i have already uploaded okay well if i talk about the routing codes of ospf so see for the single area o is used for the single area that is all about the routing table in your routing table you will find all of these okay well routers assign the router roles in ospf dr is the designated router that is also called the master router and other routers are dr and bdr and dr other there are some rules of regulation for the uh, selection of all of these so we have a separate class for that in our upcoming classes we will have that okay now let's talk talk about the let's talk about the uh, router id because all the selection of these uh, router roles will be done on the behalf of what router id so before going to discuss about the router roles you must know what is the meaning of router id okay so router id is an is the name of router basically it is the name of router on the basis of that the database will be created it look like an ip version 4 address size of router id is 32 bit and every device has a unique router id okay well let me talk let's let me open the packet tracer on that we will we are going to cover up this part router id selection okay okay so let us assume this is a uh, this is a network in which we have multiple routers router 1 router 2 router 3 and router 4 so what the rule says about the router id okay so rules say that the ip address assigned to any router the total number of ip address assigned on any router from these ip addresses one ip that is maximum ip address to the interface will become the router id if i talk about this router this router has only one ip address that is 200.0.0.1 so this will become its router id if i talk about this router we have four different ip address 200.0.0.2 200 and 10.10.10.10 10 .10 10 .10. among four these ip addresses the rule say that first of all we will consider the loopback ip address so there are two loopback ip address 9.9.9.9 .9 .9 and 10.10.10.10 .10 .10 .10. so if any router has the loopback ip address we cannot consider the physical ip addresses and the highest loopback ip address will become the router id that is why this router has a router id of 10.10.10.10 .10 .10 .10 .10. let's talk about router number three so there is no loopback ip address so among these the election will be done and in between them we can see that this is the highest ip address so highest ip address will become the router id and last one router has only one uh, one ip address that is why this is the router id of this router okay so this is how the router id is selected okay well let's talk about the process id so process id is a number in between 1265536 this is a unique identifier that is used in between multiple ospf instances running on a same router if there is same router on which multiple ospf process is running to so to differentiate the process we are providing the process id well process id is only used to initiate the ospf process okay how we can initiate the ospf process thus go to global configuration mode put a command router ospf then process id the range of process id is what a random number in between one two six five five three six so this is the process id okay here 100 is the process id for the same okay so let's move towards the gns3 in which we will do our practical okay about the os pf one okay
here let me take two router first of all router one and router two and connect them via cable like this uh, fast ethernet fast ethernet so we are going to uh, configure the ospf in between them okay so first of all let me turn on the devices like this and we cannot see the interface labels over here so we will go to view and show high label interface now you can see both the both of the interfaces okay and let me go to the console part of the routers on which we will do the configuration of the ospf okay let us assume the network available on both the router is what one uh 192.168.10.0 right 192.168.10.1 on this interface and 192.168.10.2 on this interface so first of all we have to provide the ip address to the routers okay so how we can provide the ip address first of all i will go to router number one and router number two on router number one i will go to global configuration mode configuring terminal okay interface f0 slash 0 no shutdown ip address is 192.168.10.1 and 255.255.255.0 we have just provided the ip address on this side also we will do the same global configuration mode then we are going to provide the ip address before going to provide the ip address i will go to this link and click right click here and we are going to capture the packet also what we are going to capture the packet forwarded in between these two router here we will track or capture the packet on the behalf of the wireshark so here you can see some cdp protocol will be forwarded okay currently the loop and cdp protocol is working you can see that the packets are forwarding okay let's provide the ip address on the right side also and it will generate a gracious arp so interface f0 slash 0 no shutdown okay ip address is 192.168.10.2 and 255.255.255.0 okay we have just provided the ip address you can see a gracious arc will be generated this arc, arc has the same source and destination that is why that is means this up request only generated to forward the mac address information to other devices okay here you can see that the source and destination for this are same okay let's go to the next one now we are going to advertise the network over here by the help of what ospf protocol so let's go get back to our network first of all i will configure the network on this router then i will configure or advertise the network on this router first of all go to router number one in global configuration mode put a command router ospf1 network 192.168.10.0 then you have to provide the wildcard mask 0 .0 0.0.0.255 area 0 now you will ask me sir what is the meaning of wildcard mask so dear in our next video we will cover up the wildcard mask how to calculate that okay whenever i will advertise the network by pressing enter you can see a hello packet will be forwarded hello packet is used to forward to uh to found to find the neighbor to to find the neighbor to do the neighbor discovery the osp protocol forward the hello packet in a, in every 10 second in every 10 second you can see a hello packet is generated okay whenever i will do the same on another router router 2 what will be done the router will generate the hello packet from that side also router ospf1 okay network 192.168.10.0 whenever i will advertise the network and then provide a wildcard mask 255 area 0 okay now they will form neighborship the routers will perform the neighborship and multiple packet will be forwarded for now okay you can see that there are number of packet has been forwarded because first of all router has exchanged the hello packet in response of that the dvd description packet has been forwarded and the other number of packet has been forwarded and the ospf has been configured now now both the routers can share the data okay well this is a long process there is a seven state process to forward the data 
and that will be covered in our next in our upcoming class okay so dear all uh, that's all for today if you have any confusion in this class please uh, comment uh, please share me in the comment you can ask me in the comment i will uh, try to make the video over that and have a nice day please subscribe my channel